Okay, well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here for EdChat Interactive, and we'd like to thank you for coming in and watching our session today. Uh, our session today is using augmented reality to reach students on the autism spectrum. Uh, we have uh, three presenters, or two groups of presenters. One, Robin Williams, who's gonna be presenting from Florida on how she's used uh, augmented reality with, with her students and teachers. And then we have two researchers who are coming with us from Finland, Antti Peltonimi and Tero Kuyala. And they're gonna be talking about their research using augmented reality with autistic students. And I should mention that this session is being sponsored by 3D Bear, which is an augmented reality app. And with us to introduce 3D Bear is uh, Yossi Kigala. Uh, Yossi, um, good, good evening, because I guess it's, uh, six o'clock in the evening in Finland, correct? Good evening, and uh, I'm really honored to be able to sponsor this webinar. Uh, 3D Bear is really proud of uh, having these um, parties here together, talk about an important topic that has received too little attention. Uh, so um, I just wanna say a couple of words about um, 3D Bear before we start. I hope that's okay uh, for you, Mitch. Go ahead. Um, so 3D Bear is um, integrated solution provider of immersive technologies. That's VR, AR, 360, 3D photography, 3D scanning and 3D printing in education. We provide whole packages for CTE, career and technical education, and primary education utilizing these immersive technologies. We build immersive spaces, which are good first experiences for students experiencing learning with these technologies, provide e-learning courses, and our app has been on the uh, front page of the US App Store, for example. And here are some of the recognitions that we have um, received. And um, what differentiates us from other providers is that we let our users to create their own content in AR and VR. So it's not only providing these ready-made experiences, which is make easy to get started, uh, but our goal is to, as they say, teach you to fish. So uh, working with 3D Bear, partnering with us using our applications, you will learn how to create your own content in AR and VR, uh, build your own 3D words like in Minecraft, and that's what we really are. All right, so uh, without further ado, I give the floor to the presenters. Uh, tonight. Okay, thank you. And um, so the first presenter is going to be Robin, Robin Williams. Um, and of course, immediately my phone rings, but um, <laughs> so, uh, so Robin, I'm, you know, instead of introducing you, why don't you introduce yourself so I can, uh, oh, I guess somebody answered it. Good. So why don't you, uh, I guess you're in Florida and you're a, you're a board certified behavior behavior analyst. Can you just describe what is a behavior analyst? <clears throat> a behavior analyst is uh, someone who studies the science of behavior and manipulates variables in the environment to promote desired behavior, to teach new skills, to decrease undesired or dangerous behaviors. So we do all those things. And my role specifically um, is twofold. I, I am a business owner and I do a lot of consulting for applied behavior analysis in private homes. And I'm going to talk about two of the children that I work with who are on the autism spectrum. But I also, in my, my, day, my day job, uh, provide professional development to teachers in six local districts within Central Florida. So the professional development I provide is all around managing behavior and the use of instructional and assistive technology. So kind of marrying those worlds. So what does behavior have to do with schools? Because schools is just about reading and writing, right? Oh, nothing and at all. And maybe a little math. Nothing, 
Nothing at all. Okay. <laughs> it's only foundational. You know, kids can't learn uh, if they're not ready to learn and able to self-regulate, manage their own behaviors, unless teachers have their classrooms in order and structured. So um, something I'm very passionate about is talking about that and supporting teachers in creating uh, learning environments that are safe and um, just conducive to learning. So I'm really interested to hear about your experiences with aut autistic or kids on the autistic spe spectrum and how you've used augmented reality. So I'm going to uh, bow out and let you share your screen and okay. present. But I might pop up and ask a question. No problem. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there we go. All right, can you see that? Okay. Yes. Okay, so I am just um, gonna talk very briefly about my experience supporting students with autism, children with autism that I work with. Um, and a lot of this may be information that you already know or reminders, but it kind of sets the foundation for what I wanna talk about with why I feel the use of augmented reality is so um, innovative and exciting, presenting exciting opportunities for our students with autism. So what do we really know about autism? We know that it is on the rise. We know that more and more children are being diagnosed even younger. And we know that the spectrum seems to be continuing to widen, right? Um, we have children who are on the high functioning end of autism and go on to have jobs and do things in the world and don't need as much support. And then there are children who need intensive supports throughout their lives in order to access either things in their general education curriculum or in their world. Individuals with uh, autism um, have, have specific disabilities and deficits that, are, that include having verbal, um, deficits and also nonverbal deficits and, and challenges with communication. We know that. We also know that individuals diagnosed with autism may have difficulty socializing with others. Maybe they don't want to um, talk verbally or if, if verbal communication is difficult, it, they may be less likely to do that or even being in close proximity with others, touching others or being touched by others, maintaining eye contact. And I want you to keep those things in mind when we begin to talk about how augmented reality can help with that. We also know that symbolic play, pretend play, and development is sometimes absent or, um, or slow or delayed in individuals with autism. Um, and this is one of the ways that I feel like augmented reality platforms can really provide a multitude of opportunities for kids to, to pretend and to create. So what do we know about augmented reality? And this is exciting and new for me because I really just started to learn a lot about augmented reality about two years ago. I was at the um, FETC, Future of Educational Technology Conference, and went to a few workshops and just really started to see what was out there for kids. Um, the cool thing about augmented reality or AR um, is that it, it takes reality and it mixes it with computer generated or electronically generate, generated images, 3D images in the real environment. And that's different from VR. And I think it's part of what makes it so, um, so much more accessible and easy for children on the spectrum to get into because you're taking what's already real and concrete and what's there and adding to it and enhancing it. Also, um, based on some research, Herrera 2006, augmented reality does not require that capacity to be able to think abstractly as deep. You can, you can take what's already there and add to it. So students who are on the, on the spectrum who may have that hard time going beyond what's concrete, VR helps them, I'm sorry, AR helps them do that, excuse me. So how specifically can augmented reality support students with, with autism or children with autism? 
The two children that I work with, one of them is actually is no longer a child. I just started working with him when he was about 14 years old. Um, his name is Adam and you, hopefully you can hear the audio. Um, I just wanna describe him to you a little bit before I talk about how AR can support students. Adam is an individual diagnosed with both autism and Down syndrome. And while he has verbal language, and while he does like to be in social settings, it is often very difficult for him to use that language and to socialize with others and interact with others in those settings. So in my work that I have done with him, we have been working to move him away from always relying on his uh, augmentative communication device and to use his voice more because he does have the capacity to do so. It's not a new behavioral skill. He's able to label many things. He's able to uh, talk about parts of his day. It just requires a lot of prompting. So his mother and I started several months ago to think about how can we support Adam and make it more um, exciting for him to wanna to talk about his day and the things that he's doing and create stories around what he has done. So that's one individual. Adam is now 20 years old. The other individual that I've been using the 3D Bear app with specifically, he just turned six years old and I've worked with him for about a year and a half. Uh, this child, his name is Ethan. When we began working together, he was not eating any solid food, foods at just over four years old. And so I wanted to start with a traditional applied behavior analysis program, um, pairing with his occupational therapist to introduce new foods to him and work through some desensitization. Um, and we, we did have some success in the beginning, but what we have noticed more recently is if we pair the introduction of the foods with him creating like a table setting um, in his AR environment, getting into the setting, and I'll show you what that looks like in pretending in that setting, the power of pretend, his maladaptive behaviors, his screaming, crying, dropping to the ground, um, attempting to run away from this, the, the situation and the presentation of new foods decreased significantly. It was almost another way for us to just open him up to the idea of pretending and playing around just like any other three or four year old would with plastic toy foods. He doesn't really play with toys, but he liked to interact with the food items within the AR setting. So how can AR support students with autism? Um, we can have a variety of playful educational activities. We can practice facial expressions, different body postures, um, practice communication, how you imitate things within the AR world that you're creating. Um, also, it can promote pretend play and help children begin to understand um, how pretend play works. There's a lot of research out there on theory of mind and pretense for children and how augmented reality supports that as well. And finally, um, augmented reality can facilitate collaboration with others. What we're looking at now with Adam, his mother and I, he has a peer. Adam does a lot of sports and uh, he has a peer that his mom has befriended the other mom and they are going to start using the 3D Bear app to see if they can collaborate together, create environments around what they do in their sport and begin to storytell with each other, creating videos and or uh, still shots to talk more verbally about what they're doing or what they have done. What the research says, and I don't want to mess, mess this quote up. This is another interesting um, article that I read recently. A 2015 study of children identified as having autism spectrum disorder, ages four through seven, demonstrated a significant improvement of pretend play in terms of frequency, so how often they were pretend playing, duration, how long they would engage in that pretend play for, and relevance using augmented reality in comparison to non a, a non-computer assisted situation. So 
my theory behind that, and, and I'm, I'm not a scientist like our guys from Finland, <laughs> but my theory behind that is that I think that in an augmented reality situation, children um, have more of the freedom to move with what's comfortable for them and what, what's comfortable with them as far as engaging with materials. It looks like it's there. I can get in the picture or I can get in the video or I can get in the scene and I can uh, see myself in it. So it, it, it might even feel like it's there, but it may be not as aversive as actually having to touch or be close to or hear or um, have those senses involved as well. The full study, if you wanted to print it, is found at using augmented reality to elicit pretend play for children with aut autism and the authors are there by Blackwell and Caloris. So here is, and I don't know if the sound is going to come through. Um, Adam, this is in Adam's living room. We were just sitting on the floor and we were talking about what he had done for the day. And he had done, gone to two of his sports. He actually does horseback riding, tennis regularly, four sports, excuse me, horseback riding, tennis, bowling, and basketball. Every time that I work with Adam, we go through a very similar set of questions talking about his day, what he did for the day, when he comes home from school, if he went to his work program, and the latency, the time between when I finish my question and Adam responds verbally, it could last as long as two and a half to two minutes and 45 seconds. Two and a half minutes to two minutes, two minutes and 45 seconds which may not seem like a long time, but think about it. Even if I was silent for 10 seconds, that's 10 seconds of silence. Actually, I think that was eight. That's a long time for him to process what's going on in his mind and try to get it out verbally. With the use of his augmentative communication device, that time decreased to about on average a minute because he would still have to go through and find but when i entered find the pictures when i introduced the use of 3d bear to assist him in telling stories about his day and looking at it from that angle he was so involved with it and loved placing the items in his space they're not even actually touching the flat the level ground he was just learning this was like maybe our second time using it he just placed the items in there and mentioned all of them. This was his way to begin to talk about it. That took us less than 30 seconds to do after he found all the items. So let's see if we can hear him talking about it. I hope it works. And if it doesn't, we can have these available for people to see sure. by clicking on them as well. I can send it to you. Oh, we have the spinning wheel of death. It doesn't look like it's going to work. No. Okay. Unable to play video. We'll put it in the archives, uh, but you can hear him. He says, and he has a very labored kind of voice. It sounds like a lot of uh, breath and air coming through. He says, tennis ball, bowling, bowling pin. And he's just naming everything that he likes to do, everything that he had engaged in for that day. Love that decrease in latency. And we're looking at him even starting to talk about uh, his work environment as well. So at his school program, he goes and he works at a local uh, food pantry where he organizes all of the vegetables. It's something that he loves to do. But at his work environment, they want to start to give him more activities to do. So um, based on something that I heard the other guests speaking about the other weeks, I talked to his mom about what if we create kind of like a situation where he's practicing doing these things within the AR environment. Um, and they're going to talk to you more about the work that they've done because that was really exciting to me. Like, oh, I didn't even really think about that. But of course, that makes sense. <clears throat> Here is um, an example of what Ethan's table looks up like when we set it up. For him to get into the image, he didn't feel like getting into it when I did it this day. But he gets into the image and he chooses what it is he would like to try and he pretends. Ethan is six years old and he is verbal as well. He does have a lot of vocal stereotypy, 
uh, but his language has exploded in the last year or so. He just started eating yogurt about hmm, 10 months ago. Yeah, maybe nine months ago in June of last year. And before that, it was only milk. So you can see in this, this picture, there's a picture of milk, yogurt, and fries. I know he's not going to eat fries. I know he's not going to choose fries. But this is something that we do to introduce new skills and new things that his mom may want him to begin to try. Uh, we did this with graham crackers starting about four weeks ago. And now he is nibbling and chewing on graham crackers, which is major. Without target behaviors, without the escape avoidance, screaming, crying, ah, get that away from me. He was more open to experience that. Here's another one. He created this one and he wanted to make it really tiny. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but it's on a floor. So that's a, that's a floor tile, but he wanted it all in that little tiny area. But these are milk. He wanted a milkshake. He even put a little thing of fried chicken here and watermelon. Out of all of these foods, he's tried watermelon, watermelon milk, and a milkshake. And so sometimes he's even throwing in things that he hasn't tried yet, and we feel that's his way of communicating, okay, I may be open to trying that. So much power, I feel, in, in the use of this platform and immersive technologies for individuals with autism. So that's just a little bit about what I'm doing with the clients that I serve. I would also like to try to team up with some educators here in Central Florida um, who are working in self-contained classrooms with students with autism to share the platform with them and find out more ways that they feel like they can use it. So Raman, how do you approach the student about creating the scenario? Do you just say, you, um, how do you make it so that they want to, they want to try it? So uh, with both of these individuals, they happen to really like technology already, and they're very familiar with technology. So that was good for me. Um, and the way that I approached these guys was like, hey, I wanna show you something new. Let's create a story together. So I start out with let's create a story so that they can see that they get to make up whatever they want to make up in this new environment, this new, new 3D world that includes their world. And then are there, are there other issues in, in, in addition to talking about your day and, and trying new foods? Are there other issues that you're thinking over the next month or two that you might be using augmented reality or 3D bear with, with clients? Yeah, I'm really excited about what's, what we're looking at doing for Adam with his work. So right now he's just a stock, stock person at this food pantry, but they want to pull him into more roles where he will have to, um, use his voice more, so we're tying in that using the voice, but interacting with other individuals. So even if we mm -hmm. create environments where he is checking individuals out of the line, or he has to go through and greet several people, we can set all of that up in an AR setting, and then he can video himself going into practice with the, the people in that environment. One of the things that we found is that <laughs> Adam really likes the playback of the videos. That was what was motivating enough for him. And this was without him in the videos. Ethan gets into the picture and interacts and then we'll make mm -hmm. a video. Adam just uses his voice. So we found that the first couple times he did it, when we were creating stories, he was talking louder. He was talking sooner after the prompt was given. He was wanting to talk for longer periods of time. So that alone, I think, is going to be motivating enough for him to want to get in the video and try it. Fascinating. Uh, Tara and Ante, you're currently muted, but I'm wondering, uh, I saw you you nodding and, and smiling for some of the points that Robin made. Do you have questions or comments? Maybe you could unmute and what are your thoughts? Okay, uh, thanks for your, for your interesting presentation. <clears throat> I think uh, as a, uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, same kind of observation in this our experiment. For example, uh, when you talk about uh, this, um, that uh, people with ASD they are very interested in using technological devices, and uh, <clears throat> I think that was the uh, 
uh, in this our experiment uh, that was very important important thing because uh, uh, they are very motivated to use this VR headset or watching these 360 degree videos so I think that's what that this is very in general we know that but it was very important I think in, in our work yeah, one of the barriers that I've run into, um, tar Tarot, Auntie, and, and um, Mitch, is the mom of Ethan, the younger child, she has an aversion to technological devices. She feels as if when he's using technology, it takes him away from the world. So that has been kind of a barrier with her. So I've been trying to show her how we can interact with him through this. This can actually mm -hmm. be a benefit. It doesn't have to be something that he goes off and sits in the corner on his iPad and scripts through and scrolls and repeats and you know rewinds the same video part over and over. We can make him um, a part of this video and we can help him to interact more with the world with the assistance of these um, computer generated 3D images. So that's been that's been a very interesting part of the journey as well. Have you guys run into barriers like that as well with people thinking too much technology is not good for individuals with autism? I think I think this uh, area of AR, VR, these new technologies, it's 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 concentrating this this type of thinking all the time. But hopefully, it's it's new enough <laughs> to be to be to be uh, in the wave of wow effect, and and we have to be sure that the wave uh, wow effect uh, will 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 open the true deep meanings, as you said. It, it doesn't it shouldn't be left just in, in the wow wow thing. Yeah. Uh, yes. How about the 3D uh, and we are um, library that you have there? Those images are they built in the the app, or can you make them, or how how does it? These images were in the 3D Bear app. One of the images on the previous screen was from Sketchfab. This yogurt here, but the milk and the fries are in the 3D Bear app. Um, so you can link 3D Bear with Sketchfab, Thingiverse, um, and get just about any image that you're looking for. Yes, very nice. So if, um, just Robin, if, if people were interested in finding out more from you, how could they contact you? Uh, you could uh, tag me, find me on Twitter at Robin B C B A, R O B I N B C B A, or you can email me at Robin R O B I N at simplifybehavior.com. S I M P L I F Y behavior.com. Okay, and that's the uh, American spelling of behavior, right? Yes, the American spelling of behavior, B E H A V I O R. Okay. Um, um, and I'll, I'll add that information to the presentation when you get ready to upload it, Mitch. Okay, okay. Um, good. And let's move over to Finland now. Um, and maybe, Robin, you can unshare your screen. Yeah. And we have, uh, who you've, you've heard in, in the in the conversation, um, Antti uh, Pelotiemi and Tiro Kuala, Kuala, as close um, from an American. That's that may be cl close, hopefully. And um, Antti and Tiro are both researchers. They work with the Finnish Department of Education um, and an organization in Finland. So, why don't you introduce yourselves and the Valtteri Center? And I see that you're using the British. Uh, spelling of center. So, um, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself? So, <laughs> thanks for you, Meets and Greedy Pair, for inviting uh, us to this webinar. It's great to be here. 
Uh, my name is uh, Tero Kujala and uh, I work as consulting teacher here in Valtteri Center for Learning and Consulting here in Finland. And uh, as a consulting teacher, uh, <coughs> I do consulting visits uh, in students with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, and uh, aiming to support uh, learning, school attendance, and uh, participation in their own learning environment, in meaning their local schools. And uh, I have worked uh, with uh, children and uh, young people with ASD over 20 years. And uh, for me, it has always been very important uh, how can we support uh, these, um, these people in their real life uh, environments and uh, their daily skills. And uh, that's what, that's, that was the point I was interested in also these possibilities of virtual reality and 360 degree videos. Okay, and my name is Antti Peltoniemi, and I work as an ICT, ped pedagogical ICT expert here in, in Valtteri, and, and my job is um, built with these areas of ICT and strategy. I, I lead the strategy here, ICT strategy here in Valtteri, and also uh, work, work as an, an supporting and planning with these technological interventions um, in these different areas of, of special education and my my main interest in, in here is is to get also the, the at the bottom of the meaning what the what the technology technology gives to the real everyday life for the student. And the Valtteri is a national center for learning and consulting, and we operate under the Finnish National Agency of Education, and we support the neighborhood school principal, and we offer wide range of uh, uh, services for needs for general uh, intensified and special support in, here in Finland. Okay. So let's start. <laughs> so Antti and I will you tell uh, and I tell you about our experiment, virtual reality and the 60 degree video supporting the daily needs of students with uh, autism spectrum disorder. And uh, and uh, our experiment uh, and this method we used uh, has aroused interest in Finland and uh, we have participated in almost uh, all educational and uh, technology related uh, events in Finland. And uh, of course, we were very <laughs> delighted and proud that our poster presentation was approved uh, for Autism Europe 2019 Congress uh, last September. And uh, before uh, goes a little bit background, uh, for this experiment, uh, when uh, Antti uh, told me the possibilities of uh, virtual reality, I became interested in this. Uh, just be like, uh, just um, talk with uh, Robin. We know people with ASD, they are very often interested in technological devices and uh, they are motivated to use them. And, uh, sorry. Wait a minute. Yep. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, they are well motivated to use them, and uh, the motiv motivated and uh, flexible device uh, often uh, enhances the person's uh, functional capacity, providing better information about the skills, knowledge, and uh, learning of people with ASD. And uh, just as I said, uh, for me, it's very important how we can uh, strengthen their ability to function in their everyday environment. And uh, so we, together, we think uh, that this, our method uh, had potential. 
and we could uh, find a new way to support uh, daily needs of people with ASD. Okay, um, I, I will take a little bit about the research background about this subject. Um, virtual reality, we are, and virtual reality environment, we are ease, uh, have been part of autism spectrum disorder research from 90s already. Main focus in the research from the early days on has been the social aspect and it has been done by arranging um, virtual environment with virtual avatars to collaborate with. And the actual amount of the research has been growing lately simply because the te technology is available for everyone. And I myself have been reading and gathering the research articles to perform an ethical analysis and the situation. Uh, and what I've seen so far is that research is pretty hard to arrange the way that, that the results doesn't suffer from the lack of the ecological validity. In other words, the research is pretty manifold. And, and, and the main focus has been in virtual reality environment in general. For example, Second Life virtual game like environment. So research hasn't been, hasn't been done that much from the immersive environments that are experienced with, with the head mounted display units. I might argue that they do make a difference. VR's detailed representation of the reality gives possibility to rehearse things safely and personally. Um, the research, research shows evidence that VR can provide the beneficial way to rehearse social interactions and communication the way, uh, for example, an individual student needs. Uh, and also safety and the possibility to do real life like training in safe and peaceful environment is important. Uh, the real world like visuals are needed also such as characters, rooms, furniture and other details as facial expressions, they're very important. This made me think that how could it be possible to provide the most detailed and safest, safest version of the reality with the lowest amount of effort and the most obvious answer is the reality itself, as in uh, Robin's AR example, of course. This is why we turn into 360 degree videos, which we speak a bit more later. Result says that we are can be beneficial for social, emotional, and life skills, but still more research and standards are needed. Studies have been concentrated on the learning of social interactions and the findings are that the social situations like chatting, recognizing emotions and learning everyday skills like going to the grocery etc has clearly been uh, proven to get better with some of the participants. However these findings are of course very individual and for example control groups hasn't been used in most of the studies. That's why I was very interested about, about the study that Robin presented because there was exactly that <laughs> cultural group. But, but so, so I'm just curious because you've seen uh, how long it takes or how quickly uh, people with ASD can change their behaviors and be able to go into other locations or be able to interact with people. Are, are you seeing that it's faster when they're using extended reality like VR and AR, or is it basically taking about the same amount of time, or is it taking longer? We can't say exactly yet, but after this presentation, maybe we can give some kind of answer to that, I think. Our take on this research background is to rely on the notion that the accurate representations of the people and the environment is important. And uh, the, we like to concentrate on the point where the participant or the student 
uh, can safely feel and anticipate different social elements of the okay. different situations. Yeah, I jump back to the uh, slide. This slide, uh, I mean, it is cause of our experiment, and uh, and uh, I think uh, if you think about uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, autism, and, uh, this was very 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 ambitious, uh, moving between places uh, independently, uh, perceiving spaces, and running errands reacting to stimuli from the environment and uh, just like uh, we talk about these social interactions and uh, for example here uh, that means uh, greeting, thanking and paying and this kind of a situation in this social interaction and uh, it's, uh, it's now your turn yeah <laughs> Okay, uh, we're gonna give a little bit of picture uh, of, about the whole method that we used. We'll start with the equipment we, we had. And uh, in the picture one, you, you see the Oculus Go head mounted display unit, uh, and it, it gives possibility to view the 360 videos without a mobile phone in it. Uh, at early stage, we used the Samsung Gear system and it, it it needed the phone to do the job and it worked very fine but this is a bit more more straightforward to go uh, where to go and then in the picture two we have this 360 camera insta 360 uh, 360x and it shoots pretty sharp and well colored 4k videos and pictures also if needed and in the picture three, we have this gimbal, which is basically an electronic stabilizer for 360 camera. We know very well that in general, the moving 360 camera videos are not necessarily the most viewer friendly way to go. So we wanted the shooting to be as smooth as possible, which it did eventually quite well. And here is, here is an example of this video, how, how a student um, sees it from, from, the, from the student's perspective. As you can see, now I pause the video so the student can watch around and see what's happening all the time. Here is this expert, uh, excerpt is, is from the video where where uh, student is coming to choosing to play different games with me. And he can rehearse this choosing beforehand. Okay. Wait, um, wait, wait. Did, did you make the shot? Did it work? Did it go in the hole? In the in the video, you were uh, you you were, you were shooting uh, billiards. Did it? What did you did the shot work? Oh yeah, yeah. He okay. he came over. Um, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. So uh, the method of our experiment, uh, we have uh, eleven students with ASD participated in this two phase experiment. And uh, the first phase took place at uh, a school Agnot student, meaning this our battery school. And the second phase was at each student's own, pool, own schools. And uh, <clears throat> just like Robin told us, uh, um, how this spectrum is very wide. And uh, if you talk about diagnosis of these uh, students, uh, some of students have uh, so a childhood autism and some have uh, Asperger's syndrome. So the support they needed in their uh, daily lives, it varied very, very individually. Uh, for example, uh, some of students have a personal special need assistant, a school assistant at school. And uh, here in Finland, uh, we have a, a so-called 
all these classes were studies only, only students with ASD. And uh, these all students in this our experiment, uh, they were they studies in these classes. And here's the picture about the method in practice, how it how it goes. So very important finding in this experiment was the fluency of this method. Uh, here's the timeline where the, on the left there is um, a phase where we come over to the school and start planning the video shooting, the actual shooting. Of course a little bit more planning has been done um, already but, but this refers to the actual situation when, when we came to place. Uh, it's very important to understand what the person to whom this video is to, meant to be needs to see in the video. For example, some videos we started uh, the shooting from their own wall calendar or including his or her own teacher in the beginning. Uh, after about uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so, we begin to shoot in the video and it's pretty straightforward. Tara will tell more about this video shooting later, but after the shooting, there's this technical break where everything can go wrong, <laughs> I'd say, but it, it's this phase from, from the material, the sh sh short video is, is transferred into the computer and, and, and stitched together to be viewed in the HMD device. And it can, if the video is very long, it can take a pretty long time, but these two minutes, three minutes videos were, were pretty fast. And, and after about 40 minutes or so, student could start watching the video. And even under an hour, he or she could start to perform the task. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> the content of the 360 uh, degree videos, and these are uh, based on the pieces and of special education teacher and uh, special need assistant. And, uh, and uh, Baltic school, different uh, transitions inside the building, buying ring from the canteen. And uh, at the students' own schools, safe, for example, safe transit to receive and to school library to read something, visit the school nurse and the school office, and buying breakfast from the school canteen. And uh, the goal was that uh, they will <coughs> practice, they will uh, uh, do these, uh, these um, tasks uh, individually without any. Uh, support of, for example, school need assistant. And uh, in this both basis, uh, the student watches these videos using head mountain display and then try to follow the instructions in this real environment. And uh, their actions were observed and recorded on the video, and uh, the teacher and special needs assistant uh, were interviewed uh, after watch. And uh, then about this uh, recording a video, and uh, uh, here is very important uh, to understand autism. And uh, for example, uh, in the recording, you have to bomb calmly, and you have to give calm verbal instructions. And for example, when the student has watched the video, uh, in this video, uh, I, I give an uh, uh, instruction. Now you can perform your task. Open the door, shut the door. Turn left, walk to the door. The door opens automatically. Okay. Just that Robin uh, had, has a very good example, this 10 seconds. So you have to be very calm and keep these uh, instructions very calmly. And uh, uh, from the perspective of autism, uh, it's uh, essential to pay attention in the senses. 
And uh, just I told uh, this was one of our goals. So we wanted uh, to anticipate uh, these possible disturbing factors. And uh, for example, in the school corridor, there could be noise, other people, uh, congestion in the corridor. And uh, again, an example of what I, what kind of interactions I gave in this video. Uh, there could be other people in the corridor. You can say hello to them, or you don't have to care about them. And uh, these videos, <clears throat> just like I told, uh, last uh, from uh, two to six minutes, so they were very shortly short. But uh, uh, we have to say that it was amazing how much we could do in these two to six six minutes. And uh, after the recording, the student uh, watches the video, and uh, uh, students uh, have, an, of course, they have opportunity to get familiar this VR headset uh, before this uh, this uh, our experiment, and. Uh, uh, many many have asked uh, uh, us if the sensory sensitivities affect the use of this HDM. And uh, in this our experiment, uh, only one student couldn't use this headset. And uh, this student <laughs> hasn't verbal communication, so we weren't uh, uh, sure if it uh, was a sensory problem. Maybe the headset felt uncomfortable or video, maybe it was too visual. visual. But uh, the majority of the students um, watched the video independently, just like this boy in this picture, but uh, some needed support from the special needs assistant. And uh, sitting on a chair calmed the pupils down, and uh, that was important thing in this. Okay, at this point, uh, can you pause the recording? <laughs> we will show you a video. Yes. So here is a short video, uh, and we think uh, this is a uh, good example of the effect of, uh, of immersion. And uh, here in the video, on the big screen, you can see the video I record, and the student is watching this. He's just buying a ring from canteen. And I, I will pay, I say hello. He takes money out of this. So, and then he will go to the uh, this uh, cafeteria and, and sit down. And, and can the student do things that will change the course of the video, or is the video basically linear, and they're supposed to be acting out as if they were you? Yeah, exactly. We don't have yet the po possibility to, to to choose things. Yeah. We are working on it now. This, right is, this is in the view, so we are yeah. Uh, but this, what you see, surprised us, and uh, and uh, we think this uh, immersion was the thing by the most uh, of the students succeeds in this her task uh, so well. And uh, a little example again. Here is uh, after this uh, watching this video, the student performs the task, and uh, and. Uh, here is an interesting situation with this uh, student. Uh, there was an, an unexpected situation. The door of the corridor was broken, and there was someone repairing at the, that door. And uh, student stopped at that door, and he just looked the door closed and uh, uh, open, closed and open. And uh, when I saw, saw this um, in, in 
I were very sure, I was very sure he wouldn't continue and this, uh, but uh, after for a while, he walked to the canteen, choose just same shoes I had chosen in the video and gave money. So he succeeded this video in, in his task. Just, um, it was, um, uh, and how many times did the student watch the video? Did they just watch the video once and then they were able to perform the actions or did they tend to watch it multiple times? They, they could watch it, watch it yeah. several times, but, but most of them watched it only once. Yes. Yeah. One, uh, one or two asked for yeah. Re yeah. repetition. Yeah. Yes. So, same observations. So then, um, at first we thought that we are lucky if, if, we, if they even want to put on the HMD display, but, but this fear disappeared quickly. Every one of them was very motivated and in, enthusiastic to get going. Of course, and there was little nervousness that's always, always there. The immersion appeared to affect, uh, affect strongly, and the students watched the instructional videos very uh, attentively, like not wanting to take the HMD off, not speaking or doing anything else than con concentrating on the video. They were also listening the instructions in the video very carefully. So we saw how fast the forming of the immersion was. It was immediate. They were in the video right away. And this gave um, the, the main notion that every one of the students almost uh, started, after they have watched the video, we said, you can um, do it. No, we didn't say anything else. And every one of them stood up and left and um, did, did, did very, very strongly and independently. Yes. So this uh, positive connection of the, this immersive video and uh, this student behavior uh, was visible in the students' confident uh, actions in the real situations and just like uh, on the daughter, clear adherence to the video instructions. And uh, uh, in social interactions, uh, most of students uh, succeed, succeed in greeting, thanking, paying, and for example, asking for an envelope or cool office or asking for plaster from school nurse or this just like be, be, be uh, see uh, buying ring from the school canteen. So when you when you were uh, doing this experiment, you were using that the full head mounted display. So the students were sitting down, but they were completely immersed. Have, what are your thoughts that it, of the students watching that 360 video on a phone rather than through a head mounted display? Would there we be thought, a difference? We yeah. thought this. Uh, quite a bit sometimes yeah. because because we we are not very clear <laughs> on, on the on the differences between these two but what's clear what is clear is that uh, uh, they they were much more concentrated on when they had the, the um, headphones and the, the yeah. HMD and this has to has to be something to do with this yeah. this I think uh, there is, in my opinion, there is a very big uh, difference between, uh, between that when you are just uh, watch this uh, from the uh, mobile phone and uh, uh, these uh, students, uh, uh, these uh, teachers and uh, special education uh, school assistants, uh, they told uh, you know, that uh, and, uh, these students, they were more concentrated and they were so, so they were just inside in this video so that uh, helped them a lot because if you just uh, watch this video on this mobile phone there could be uh, disturbing factors around uh, around him and so he could concentrate something else than this video i think uh, in more, if you think if i think from perspective of autism i would like to say this way.
and we have to emphasize also that they they did those tasks without the school assistant they they did right after watching the video uh, most of them did it without any support well, that's fascinating yeah okay uh, the safety and the fluency of this method first the immersive experiment or we can say that the safety is twofold first there's the possibility to, to stop the situation when the student is watching the video as, as soon as something comes up <laughs> and second watching the content can be very comfortable can be done in very comfortable um, environment with the most important people like with the teacher with the school assistant or therapist close to the student also the video can contain only specific people if need because this is quite fast to make the shooting and um, individualize the videos uh, in summary the vr experience may give feedback beforehand if the scenario at hand is too scary or cause distress fluency is uh, in this intervention is only possible if the technology users know what they are doing this we are pretty sure because i, I refer to the actual situation where the student is waiting to watch the video and everything is ready one has to know the technology well enough if something goes wrong at the same time um, one has to be able to deal well with the autism spectrum student who, for example, doesn't have ability to speak. If these aspects of experience and expertise are being taken into account, the fluency follows and the situation can be smooth without technical interference. We didn't, we didn't meet a, a very big technical interferences. And I would like to uh, say that here that uh, it was very, very important uh, that uh, and uh, Antti has this uh, great professional experiment, this uh, technology, and also I have this long experiment uh, working with ASD. So we were very mm -hmm. good pair in this, and uh, I think that was the one one point that uh, that. Uh, that our this, for example, these videos recording and and uh, these moving these to the computer and it was very influential. Yeah, the challenges of this this method has to be shared, even though we did not confront confront them that much. Uh, first, of course, the epilepsy must be taken into account, and of course, the HMT sh should not be used if there's a slightest doubt of risk of epileptic, epileptic uh, seizure if used it should be under controlled conditions uh, then the most obvious downside can be with 360 videos that they can cause nausea for some but for example none of our students felt this and somehow in my experience is that adults feel nausea pretty much more often than young people i can explain this though uh, the experience of watching 360 video is always personal. So the same content can cause as many interpretations as the viewers. Some, sometimes it's hard to say exactly what the viewer is watching. Uh, this may, in some cases, cause problems if the uh, HMD, for example, can send a picture out to others to see what the viewer exactly watches. At the first stage, we had this problem with the Samsung Gear uh, thing, and we weren't able to say um, if, if the video was even rolling on. <laughs> and that it, it was pretty the only big technical and, and technical interference. Unsuccessful recording can also happen, especially when dealing with the very bright or low light environment of that uh, or if the video tends to move too quickly or jump or sway around this is this is i think it causes nausea very fastly if, if, if it moves too fast and sometimes there's there are referred before before the to the sensory coherence problems that the immersive HMD can give too much information 
for their senses and can cause unexpected situations. So, so yeah, so Rob, Robin, I, I've been watching you as as uh, uh, Tara and Auntie have been going through their information, and it looked like you had a couple questions that you were interested in. Um, well, question kind of uh, comment on the previous slide when they were talking about taking into account, um, I'm sorry, back one more. <laughs> Oh, I don't even remember where it was, but you were talking about um, uh, being in a safe environment. Maybe it was the next one. The importance of yeah. kids being able to practice in a safe way and able in order to generalize those experiences in, in such a quick way. I'm amazed by it. they watch the video once, maybe twice, and then they go and do it. And as you were talking just now about some of the challenges I would not have thought about nausea and epilepsy, but of course we have to think about that. Um, and I also feel like maybe there's, um, like what are the factors that make a child more susceptible to doing well with VR as opposed to AR, being fully immersed in the technology or interacting with the real environment and some technology. Like I wonder what those factors were, would be. I was just nodding and thinking about that. But the, yeah. what, what you're doing is so exciting. I mean, just watching it, it's really cool. Yeah, it just it would seem to me that since you made the 360 video, it would be interesting to just try it on a few kids and see, you know, watching on their phone instead of watching on the, on the video display and see if, if they were able to process it in the same way. Yeah, and generalize so quickly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah we, that's, we that's that true. Time. And uh, the video is already made, and so yeah, it should be yeah. really easy to just show it on the phone for yeah. try yeah, with uh, three kids. Yes, yes. We we tried this with the one one student who 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 didn't who, like the headset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he was the one who we didn't know if he saw the video at all with the HMD. So we gave it through the tablet. Yeah. And but he uh, he succeeded in his task. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's point. Yeah. So future plans. Uh, uh, yes, uh, our future holds at least a cooperation with University of Tampere to develop the, the technical side and the research side research sides from for this intervention further. And the University of Tampere they have a long history for virtual reality research. And with their special program, we may try out to add some interactive choices into the 360 videos that lead the viewer into the place or content they prefer to. This, this has been asked, asked from us. And maybe we could also um, put together with the AR mm -hmm. side of this, this also. It would be would be pretty nice to try out if if the, for example some kind of advices or, or signs comes up in certain points in in bus station or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with this in mind, we'd like to go further to example uh, support the students in the uh, big transitions in life, like like pre primary primary education, basic education, vocational school upper secondary school by giving the presentation of different facilities beforehand. And of course we are planning to get more detailed empirical research for, for to get going and the more information about what, what's really happening here, why this is, why this looks this. <laughs> right. Right. So, right. So, so somebody watching this decided that they wanted to set up their own 360 videos and try them with their students. Probably you'd want them, you know, it would help them if they could get in touch with you, right? So yeah. How would they get in touch with you? Yes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, summary, uh, we think this uh, video R for uh, that can definitely present a person environment and people in that. And uh, in this hour, per uh, in uh, experiment, uh, we think VR gives us opportunity to practice the social interactions, and uh, I think that's great. 
possibly to us to in the future uh, to find out uh, more about this this point. And uh, here is our contacts. You can see it here if you want to contact us. Thank you for all you. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Very yeah, that was, yeah, I, I thought so. that. Thank you, Robin, also, uh, Taro and Monty. Um, I, I will say, knowing 3D Bear, that 3D Bear is also, um, they, may be work, we may, they may be working with you, Taro and Monty, but they're setting up 360 videos also for special education students okay. um, to let them practice different events, such as, for example, how do you, um, how do you wash your clothes and showing them how to, you know, sort the clothes, put them into a washing machine, take them out, um, figure out what settings to put the dryer on and things like that. Doing that through 360 videos and augmented in virtual reality. So it's a, it's a, it's an interesting time looking, you know, looking at all these, these capabilities. Yes. So, um, yeah, th thank you. This, I've, I've learned a lot. I think there are a lot of people who are going to be watching the archives. I will say, um, it turns out I, I messed up. I don't know how I did this, but I set up two different Zoom rooms at the same time. And evidently the instructions I gave to everybody else were for the different Zoom room. So uh, this afternoon, I'll be putting <laughs> together the, um, the archives and I'm gonna set it out for everybody who subscribed. And so I think we're, we're gonna be getting a lot of people who are gonna be watching the archive. Um, awesome. So, um, so thank you. And uh, looking forward to interact with all of you soon. Um, you know, we do have a few other um, Edge Ed Interactives coming. <laughs> I think, um, Auntie, if you can stop sharing for a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and um, I think I'm just going to show on. <clears throat> oh, oh. Um, on my screen. That's okay. I'm going to share. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so this is the March 10th. And we have on EdShed Interactive, we have um, another session coming up on March 19th, which is on game based learning. Um, and then March 24th, which is also on games, and then use, teaching social emotional learning using digital storytelling and augmented reality, astronomy and space missions and astronauts coming up in April. So uh, I'd like to encourage people to go to www.edgeheadinteractive.org. These are all free and, um, and, and join us. Um, so thank you again and, um, and I'll sign off and I'll let you, uh, in, in Finland, it's already late in the evening. So um, enjoy your evening, Robin. Enjoy your afternoon. Get back to work. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, and you'll see. Um, uh, don't forget that I believe it's your wife's birthday, and you should be getting back to her. So, <laughs> this is Miss Weisberg nice signing off for guys. Hopefully, I can stay nice in to touch you. with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yes. Okay. All right. Good evening. Bye. Good evening. Bye bye.